So my name is Didier Coelho. I am professor at the University of Geneva. What does this award mean to you? Well, this award means uh, a lot of a long story, <laughs> a long story about uh, a fantastic discoveries that we did almost 20 years ago with Michel Mayor of the first planet outside the solar system. It's a long story because if I look back the time since 95 when we detected the first planet to now, I see how much triggering, how much progress uh, this discovery has stimulated. And starting from one, and now we have more than I think 700 of planets. And uh, we started by detecting a very weird, what we call hot Jupiters. And now we are approaching the Earth. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic endeavor. It's a, it's a real story. And, and, and this award means that uh, there is a clear recognition of uh, the impact of this first step that was crucial to initiate this, uh, this big game or big story we are in these days. Uh, when you began your research on extrasolar planets, few people believed in your success. Can you describe the moment of discovery? When we started the program 20 years ago, uh, it was seen as, a, let's say, weird research theme. Uh, searching planet in the universe was not the main theme of astrophysics that it is like today. So we started this uh, coming from a broad perspective, trying to understand what would be around the stars, anything smaller than the stars. So it could include object which is known right now like brown dwarf, but also planet. And we had this uh, global approach with this set of new ideas, uh, how to detect them, and new components. We were using uh, uh, the CCDs, cross correlation techniques, so where we, we deal with the data, fibers, optical fibers, very few people was using this in astronomy at this time, and a couple of other tricks um, to build a program. So at this time, it was pretty unique, the way we designed this school experimented. And, uh, and we started the program looking very open, very wide, let's say open-minded, and uh, we, did this, we discovered something that was not expected at all, which was a, a planet like Jupiter, but with the orbit of uh, something which is even shorter than Mercury. That was something that from the theory point of view, we had no idea it could exist at that time. How did the astrophysical community react? Well, the field since uh, this first discovery has tremendously changed. It has changed in the spirit. I think at that time it was really uh, the spirit of the pioneer. We were trying to, to find the first planet, to, to get the feeling how they were. I uh, know we have moved away from this and we, have, we know that there are plenty of planets and we are trying to move to another stage. That, was, that is trying to get down in mass. Uh, as close as the Earth we can be, because we don't want only to detect the, the big planet, the Jupiter's planets. We also want to find the small ones. And the reason why we want to spawn the small ones is behind all this, there is the question of the solar system. So we, if you want to compare the solar system, how rare we are, how unique we are, uh, we have to find the same kind of planet and in the solar systems. And uh, recently, I must say that there is an even more strong change in the field is we, we move to uh, kind of doing weather on these planets. We, 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 we are now reaching a level of study where we can try to understand what the atmospheres of the big planets are made of, try to see some components, try to see possible evolutions of, of, of uh, the, the moon effect, the light that, that, that beams on the planet, beams back. Uh, to, to us. So we, we're moving to a, a much more detailed study that allow a lot of dreams because going into more detail in the atmosphere of planets, going into more detail about what these planets are made of. Are they made of rocks? Are they made of water? Are they made of gas? Are they a mix of both of them? Is it ice? Is it melted ice? It can be many things. It can be a lot of very different fraction of everything. So you need to get a lot of information on these planets, not only the fact that there is a planet, but you need to know the mass, the size, 
you need to go to, to know uh, the mass of the size get you the density you need to know the temperature of the planet you need to do the composition so we're trying to move into this 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 new area uh, and and the field has, has moved so so drastically so at the beginning there were a handful of people uh, that was called the planet hunters we were part of these ones the, the first ones uh, and now there are 1,000 people, 2,000 people working on this field. It becomes one of the big fields of research in astronomy. And the reason why it's so attracting for people is because at the very end of the way, what people would love to try to get is some kind of hint about, about life. There is this dream that one day will come. I mean, one day we will be able to maybe probe if there is some life activity on these planets. We can think about detecting some, something like the oxygen or, or even trying to detect some, some the rotation period of subcontinents of, on some of these planets. So this is not for today, but this will be for tomorrow. So now we, we're just moving slowly from detecting all these worlds, new worlds, um, into trying to get the real understanding what what they are made. It's pretty fascinating how, how this field has, a, has evolved. What's the next big step in this area? So I think the next big steps uh, that we're experiencing today is, uh, is uh, trying to understand um, uh, what's, what's on these planets, what's the atmosphere of these planets. So people are, are designing experiments right now, and we, we know that there are a couple of, 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 of planets that may be located in an area that we call the habitable zone, where the temperature would be good enough for life. And as you know, it's, uh, in the solar system, we have these two very similar planets. One is called Venus, the other one is called the Earth. They are very similar in, in mass, in size, in location, not, not very far off each other. But on one of them, on Venus, there is no way there can be any life. I mean, this, the, the atmosphere is a total disaster. It's very, much more too, too hot, while it's, it's nice on, on the Earth. So, so you see why we want to do, get into this detailed understanding of the planet because it's not enough to know that there is a planet that may be, that may be rocky and in the good locations. If you really want to understand what is going on on the surface of these planets, you need to be able to probe the atmospheres. So there's a lot of uh, experiment ongoing trying to move towards this, uh, this area. There is, uh, uh, of course, uh, programs. Uh, we can think about uh, the future generation of space telescopes, the James Webb Space Telescopes, that could be able to do a little bit of work along this way. There is a big project in Europe, which is called Extremely Large Telescopes. Uh, Extremely Large Telescope has the capability to build image, to, to have image of, uh, of planet, small planets, so and then getting some some flux, some light from these planets that will tell you uh, something on the composition of these planets. So this is these big big steps uh, where astronomy is looking forward. Where astronomy is also uh, meeting uh, geophysics, start to meet biology, and um, and trigger also uh, philosophical questions. I mean, uh, planets, life outside the. The solar systems is not only a question for physics, it's also a question for, for civilization, it's a question for uh, why life here and not there, and all these questions here. So it, it triggers a lot, a lot of very exciting interest for, for many fields, and, and it's also part of, uh, of the excitement that we, we can share on this field. Do you think it'll be possible one day to detect an inhabited planet, a world bearing life, when? Well, the detection of, of a planet where there is life uh, outside the solar system uh, will come one day. Uh, the reason why I believe it will come one day is when you can see the progress made in 20 years in this field and, and the progress in general that is done in science in the last 100 years. So I have no doubt that there is no limit, there is no astrophysical limits. The physics doesn't prevent you to do that. Just a matter of of size of instrument and cleverness of the way you address the data and quality of the of the work, so all this will come. Um, so when it it's it's not clear, but all this all this will come. It's just a matter of of working step by step towards this this goal. So this yes, well one day we'll get a picture of a planet on the star that you can see by the eyes, very likely not far from from us, 
where there is a planet that is rocky and where we may have found some hint of life. But life doesn't mean that you have uh, uh, people like us. It, can, it means that there has, there has been life on set. And then it will be a tremendous laboratory to try to understand remotely. And that's a big challenge here because it will be difficult to go there. It's so distant or so, so big in, in space. Uh, but trying to understand remotely what we can learn from the biology perspective on, on going on on these planets. And, but that's another chapter, that's, that's another time, but this will come. I'm extremely proud to have received with Didier this award because it's uh, the, the result of a long, long effort to develop all this instrumentation, to have the sensitivity large enough to detect extrasolar net. This was done during several dozen of years, several generations of instruments finally we achieved the, to the sensitivity needed to, to detect planets. So evidently uh, it's, a, it's a nice recognition of this long effort. And I have also another aspect maybe uh, part of this, uh, of this story is the fact that I have a lot of, of relationship with some colleagues from Spain and uh, next year, not exactly in a few months, we will set a new spectrograph at La Palma in Canary Island in a, in a big Spanish observatory. So this will reinforce our link with our Spanish colleagues. We have presented the discovery of 51 PEG during the conference held in Florence at the beginning of October 95. And this was the first moment when we have the first reaction of our colleagues to this discovery. And it was quite interesting to see that part of our colleagues saw mostly the difficulties because it was a so short period planet, but some other colleagues say, oh, don't mind, we will try to find the correct explanation in the future. You are sure of, the, of, the, of your, the quality of your measurement, so go ahead and we will see later. And very, very soon we have a confirmation by, by other colleagues of the reality of this, of this discovery. So, uh, and then after it was a huge burst of, of interest and excitation in the, in the community with a huge increase of the number of people working in this new chapter of astronomy. How did you react? What was the, the moment of confirmation, if you will? The real moment where we were, we were sure that the reality of this motion was uh, the confirmation. When we, we did some measurement in July 1995, and we, we saw exactly what was expected from the pre previous measurement. So at the time, we were absolutely sure that it was really a periodic motion with the same amplitude, the same period, and all the good characteristics for the effect due to a low mass companion. So this was evidently an extremely exciting moment, and we went with Didier, uh, with our family in, uh, in this small observatory in South of France, and we did some celebration, and then after we rushed to write the paper to announce this discovery. How has the field evolved since your discovery? I remember just reading through lines. This is uh, probably uh, the, the most unexpected result of of our discovery. This is the, the huge burst of activity having started from the discovery of 51 PEG. At the, uh, in 94, 95, we were only a few teams of two people working in that field, except the theoreticians, that so you have some theoretical work done in other place. But then you have an in, a huge increase of the number of people working in that field with new ideas, transiting planet and, uh, and satellites and so on. So this, uh, today in the different conference we have on this, in this domain, we, we have, I don't know, a few hundred, maybe more than 1,000 young colleagues starting to work in the field of extrasolar planet. This was really the beginning of a new chapter of astrophysics. What is the next big step in this area? It's quite difficult to, to mention what will be the next big step because evidently on the very long term we can identify very big steps like the first images of uh, 
Earth type planet, rocky planet, and so we can um, imagine the discovery still more uh, ambitious uh, goal, the, the first discovery of, of a living species on some planet. But this is really long, long term goals. On the short, short term, I believe what we can really uh, dream is to have a, a list of good candidates of rocky planet where you have what we call in the habitable zone of the star. So planet at the correct distance of the star to have the possibility of the development of the, of the chemical co chemistry of, of the life development. So, and not on real mode star, because what we need to, uh, to identify this kind of, of low mass planet orbiting extremely close star to have the chance to do follow-up studies. Uh, because uh, if the star is too far away, we have no chance to do this kind of, of uh, detailed complementary study to detect life. So, personally, what I dream is to have, maybe in 20 years from now, uh, a list of, of stars, uh, part of our neighbors, the closest stars we have, uh, with a planet at the correct distance to have the possibility of life development. It's quite difficult to, to, to know when we will discover the first inhabited planet. You know, it's really, really a di very difficult uh, goal. Uh, the light reflected or emitted by, by a planet is so small compared to the light emitted by a star. So it's really, really difficult to, to detect and to do the chemical analysis of the, of the spectroscopy or the spectra of, of uh, planets. So I'm a little bit pessimist and uh, probably this will not be possible in the close future. Uh, it, we know we have some, some ideas how to do it uh, by space uh, experiment, but these are extremely expensive, difficult experiment and I'm not really optimistic that we can have some first answers before several decades. So I'm sure that this, this goal will remain at the top of the priorities of space agency, ESA or NASA, but this will need a lot of time before we have the correct instrumentation to do it.